Hey there, awesome RC fans. Welcome to TJ's RC. Glad you're back here with us. Or if you're here for the first time, thanks for stopping by and checking us out. Continuing our troubleshooting journey with the Bronco here. If you recall in the last episode, part four of our troubleshooting series, we thought we had the problem figured out when we discovered that the connections between the ESC and the motor were slightly corroded. So I fixed that, made those connections all clean and good again. However, the next time we took the truck out to the park, we had even more problems. And the longer we were out there, the worse it got. I was able to catch a little bit of it on film for you to see. I'll show that to you guys in a second. What you need to listen for in the clip is that the ES-1 sound kit continues to rev, meaning that the receiver is sending signal to the ESC, telling the motor to go, but the motor's not turning. You can hear that the gears aren't spinning, that the tires aren't spinning. It lasts just for a brief moment, and then all of a sudden, bam, it hits, and the motor starts spinning again. So listen carefully here in this clip. You can see movement stops. The ES-1 sound kit continues to rev, but the motor isn't turning at all. That kept happening more and more and more. So that brings us to right here on the bench. We're gonna go ahead and replace the motor that's in here with a brand new brushless that I picked up online. This is a 10 shock brand rock crawler 906 2400 kV brushless motor that I picked up specifically for rock crawlers. Hopefully that's gonna do really well. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, then stick around as we head over to the bench. First thing we gotta do is take the screws out that hold the motor in. Then we can go ahead and pull the whole assembly out of there. Now I'm not gonna worry about taking these old connectors apart because I got new bullet connectors to solder on for the new motor. Just so I can make sure that just so I can make sure that everything is as good as it can possibly get when I go ahead and put this back together with the new motor. Gonna take the motor mount plate off and set that aside. And I'm going to remove the pinion. Because the KV of the new motor is lower than this one, I think I'm going to go back to the stock pinion. But before we can get into that, I need to go ahead and solder on the new bullet connectors that I got to go on the ESC wires. Good thing to remember when you're getting ready to do soldering, if you're going to be using shrink wrap, make sure you put the shrink wrap on before you start soldering your new ends on. I don't know how many times I've made that mistake only to have to take it apart. So remember to do that first. Also, when it comes to shrink wrap, make sure you put it down away from where you're heating or it'll start to shrink before you get a chance to move it into place. Another little tip for soldering is having a handy little buddy. All right, there's one down, moving on to number two. All right, so we will let those cool. Be careful when you're mounting the motor to the motor plate, especially on the TRX-4, because it's got specific mounting holes for each size pinion that you use. This is an 11 tooth pinion, so it needs to go on C, where I had it previously with the 9 tooth pinion was A, 9A, 10B, 11C. Just make sure that you have it in the right spot for whatever pinion you're using. Also, when you're putting a new pinion on, the, test fit the motor and plate in place to make sure that you have the pinion indexed onto the shaft the proper amount. If the pinion was too far in, the teeth wouldn't fully mesh, but if the pinion was too far out on the shaft, the problem you'd into is that this set screw, because it sticks out, it would end up hitting the spur gear teeth and that would just be catastrophic. You don't want that. So be sure to test fit it, making sure you've got the pinion in the right place on the shaft before you do the final assembly. Bring the motor cover back into place, tighten down the screws. Obviously be sure to whack the camera a little bit. Once you get the motor mounted, you can go ahead and start connecting the leads we're gonna put these in place temporarily. Move the shrink wrap into place. Don't heat up the shrink wrap just yet. If the motor rotation is not right on a sensorless brushless system like this, you can just swap two of the wires around and that will change the 
direction of rotation. You don't have to go into the settings on the ESC to change them. But that's only on a sensorless. Sensored brushless don't do that. So let's get a battery in here and get the remote. Got the remote on. Got the truck up on a block. Powering on. All right, we've got tires rotating in the proper direction. That's all we needed to do with that. We just wanted to make sure that the tire directional rotation was where it needs to be so that we could go ahead and heat up our shrink wrap on here. Then I will wind these wires up out of the way. We got everything back in, the new 10 shock RC906 rock crawler. However, I'm not gonna make any predictions like I did last time and say I hope that this solves the problem. We're just gonna play and wait for an opportunity to take this guy out and do some trailing to see if indeed this was the problem or if it's the only piece left that we haven't checked and that's the ESC. Until then, thanks for being awesome RC fans. Glad you were here today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already. You guys are the best. See you next time.